Macmillan Audio presents The Whisper Man by Alex North. Read for you by Christopher Eccleston. Jake. There's so much I want to tell you, but we've always found it hard to talk to each other, haven't we? So I'll have to write to you instead. I remember when Rebecca and I first brought you home from hospital. It was dark and it was snowing, and I'd never driven so carefully in my life. You were two days old and strapped in a carrier in the back seat, Rebecca dozing beside you, and every now and then I'd look in the rearview mirror to check you were safe. Because you know what? I was absolutely fucking terrified. I grew up as an only child, completely unused to babies, and yet there I was, responsible for one of my own. You were so impossibly small and vulnerable, and me so unprepared, that it seemed ludicrous they'd allow you out of the hospital with me. From the very beginning, we didn't fit. Rebecca held you easily and naturally, as though she'd been born to you rather than the other way around, whereas I always felt awkward. Scared of this fragile weight in my arms, unable to tell what you wanted when you cried. I didn't understand you at all. That never changed. When you were a little older, Rebecca told me it was because you and I were so alike. But I don't know if that's true. I hope it isn't. I'd always have wanted better for you than that. But regardless, we can't talk to each other, which means I'll have to try and write all this down instead. The truth about everything that happened in Featherbank. Mr. Knight, the boy in the floor, the butterflies, the little girl with the strange dress, and the whisper man, of course. It's not going to be easy, and I need to start with an apology. Over the years, I told you so many times that there was no such thing as monsters. I'm sorry that I lied. Part 1. July. 1. The abduction of a child by a stranger is every parent's worst nightmare, but statistically it's a highly unusual event. Children are actually most at risk of harm and abuse from a family member behind closed doors, and while the outside world might seem threatening, the truth is that most strangers are decent people, whereas the home is often the most dangerous place of all. The man stalking six-year-old Neil Spencer across the waste ground understood that only too well. Moving quietly, parallel to Neil behind a line of bushes, he kept a constant watch on the boy. Neil was walking slowly, unaware of the danger he was in. Occasionally, he kicked at the dusty ground, throwing up chalky white mist around his trainers. The man, treading far more carefully, could hear the scuff each time, and he made no sound at all. It was a warm evening. The sun had been beating down hard and unrestrained for most of the day. But it was six o'clock now and the sky was hazier. The temperature had dropped and the air had a golden hue to it. It was the sort of evening where you might sit out on the patio, perhaps sipping cold white wine and watching the sunset, without thinking about fetching a coat until it was dark and too late to bother. Even the waste ground was beautiful, bathed in the amber light, it was a patch of shrubland edging the village of Featherbank on one side with an old disused quarry on the other. The undulating ground was mostly parched and dead, although bushes grew in tough thickets here and there, lending the area a maze-like quality. The village children played here sometimes, although it was not particularly safe. Over the years, many of them had been tempted to clamber down into the quarry, where the steep sides were prone to crumble away. The council put up fences and signs, but the local consensus was that they should do more. Children found ways over fences after all. They had a habit of ignoring warning signs. The man knew a lot about Neil Spencer. He'd studied the boy and his family carefully, like a project. The boy performed poorly at school, both academically and socially, and was well behind his peers in reading, writing and maths. His clothes were mostly hand-me-downs. In his manner, he seemed a little too grown up for his age, already displaying anger and resentment towards the world. In a few years, he would be perceived as a bully and a troublemaker, 